Beware, this podcast is not a news or journalistic source for information. This is for entertainment purposes only, with solid viewpoints from two guys that are brutally honest about the things that you all are too scared to say or discuss. Please like and subscribe to our page for more engaging content. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wits End Podcast. I am your host, Devin Witt, alongside my co-host, Joe The Show. And uh, today, we're going to be talking about some of the more controversial things going on in the internet right now, which happens to be the Supreme Court decision to end affirmative action whenever it comes to college admission. And I think it's really interesting because you really get to see in my opinion, who the real racist people are. <laughs> yeah, it definitely shows, you know, there's, yeah, it does. I mean, it does to a degree. Um, yeah, I've got quite a bit to say about both sides of that, but yeah. Yeah, so I mean, the, the thing of it is, like, I, I was scrolling through a, a lot of, because I, I mainly use Twitter as, like, my news and information gathering techniques. <laughs> um, but with that, though, no, I, I saw a lot of politicians and influencers, uh, and just people kind of coming out and saying that, Ending affirmative action in regards to college admissions is going to undoubtedly hurt minorities uh, and stop them from achieving the American dream. Mm -hmm. And you just have to really ask yourself, like, is that true? You know, if I no longer have preference to get into a a school, uh, whether it's a prestigious one, like an Ivy League school or just like a regular four year community college, whatever, you know, is that actually going to stop me from being able to? achieve the American dream, you know, or are we lying to people? Well, that might happen too. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a touchy subject because the bottom line of it is what this really, what you boiled down to it. And I'll just say it because I'm notorious. that will say the things that nobody else says. This takes away the black privilege. That's what it is. Um, because if you look at this, what, when this all gets boiled down into the colleges, it, you know, it comes down to, there's, you can get in off color. I mean, it is what it is. Um, a, you know, not to discredit any race. I don't care if it's Asian, white, you know, Hispanic, you know, black, it doesn't matter. Is if they have to have a certain number of basically race. And so because of the outweighs of, you know, different races, there's, and there's a lot of other factors. You know, I'd have to look at statistics, you know, I have, but there's, that's a bunch of jargon. Um, that most people probably wouldn't even understand anyway. Uh, it took me a little bit to grasp hold of either way. So you have a, and it doesn't matter if it's white, you know, you, you look at, you know, Asian, you know, you can, you can compare it to whatever that the black people in some of these schools, especially the ones that got sued at a higher percentage of getting in just because of that minority based off race. You know, if I say here, people, the, my issue with it is, is this, is this is what happens. You all ask for it. And what I'm saying is this is the, the black community ask for this and this is what happens. Now, here's my, here's what I'm saying by that. You all want, I want to be created equal. I want to be created equal. I want, and I, and I, I agree. Let me be clear. It's going to sound probably racist and I don't mean it, mean it to be that way in the least bit, but you push these things and you push these things and you push these things. And then everybody's like, you know, what? affirmative action. Let's make it, let's make it equal where you can actually get in to these colleges based off your test scores. You know, you're how, how smart you are. And, and so that's what this is, is it's, it's not discrediting any race. Cause I know there's going to be people out there that has, absolutely does not agree with what I say. And they're going, Oh, you're calling black people dumb because you just said, you know, based off test scores, well, shoe fits where it, I'm not categorizing a race that way, but heaven forbid, if we actually said, Hey, what we want is the elite students at our school. Well, so now we have to take an Asian person. To, to fit a role, even though they don't test as good. You know, we need people in medical fields and people in engineering, you know, all these, you know, technology things. And, and in, yeah, they come out of Harvard, they come out of, you know, you know, Yale, Yale all the, you know, whatever. Um, and so what do you say? Okay, we'll let this person in, even though he's not near as, you know, qualified because of the race. So to reinforce what I said, because I know I didn't exactly clarify that, is this is a prime example of being created equal. And now that you have it, you don't like it. Well, okay, but that's the, the problem is because I, I feel like what, what's really happened, because I, although I agree with you, the easiest way to handle college admissions anywhere is just based off the test scores, based off mm-hmm. your test scores, your GPA, uh, things like that. 
you know, maybe I'm sure for like Ivy League schools, you probably have a, a section in there for like community involvement or, or something along those lines. But the problem with it is that when you're arguing with people that are for affirmative action, as in people that think you should be allowed into a school or right. a job based on the color of your skin and not the content yeah, of your character, uh, the argument then becomes, well, the system's racist, okay? Right. Black people and other minorities don't have a chance to get into these schools because they grow up in poor neighborhoods and they have a lack of education and mentors and this and that. And yeah. so, like, that's going to be the argument here of, like, basically, oh, if you just make it where it's all just based on a, a score on a test, mm -hmm. then clearly black people can't succeed or Hispanics can't succeed. But what I would say is that's why this court case happened is because you have the Asian population, part of the minority group in America, that said, no, that, that's not the case at all. And they showed with their hard work and dedication that, yes, if you do apply yourself and study as much as humanly possible mm -hmm. uh, and end up with classes by the time you're 16. No, I'm just kidding. Well, uh, the thing but is you, the point that I'm getting at, though, is that the Asians bringing this uh, lawsuit against Harvard and others kind of proved that there's still racism involved. Well, they're my, they're in minority. Action. The Asians are a minority under the black people. And that's what I'm saying. So it's like you, you have a minority population that is not being allowed into the school because they don't fit the criteria of underprivileged, uh, stupid, you know, or not uh, qualified like other people may be, like, a, say, a white person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the thing, you know, you look at the, you know, the affirmative action thing, the thing of it is based off, you know, if you just, if you're so, eh, maybe narrow-minded, it depends on your viewpoint. You, you could use narrow-minded to say, you know, well, if you look at it just in school, this is not an issue. But the problem of it is just like, you know, and I would even compare this to like the LBGTQ crap, is if it's just one little thing, okay, we can probably find some happy medium on this. But then when the thing of it is you attack them on one thing and they have to bring a whole gamut of other crap in the middle of it saying, and, you know, and, and here's what the, where they're going with this, is now it's going to affect the setting a space for the workplace. It's setting the place... You know, like, come on, like, I'm not saying that's that's not a possibility and I'm not so narrow minded to say now what now what happens. But what I, what I could say now what should happen is we should the America should start waking up to the fact that racism is real and it needs to be dealt with on a personal level, which is your freaking home, not the workplace, not the you know, there's things if you want racism to I don't think it's ever going to stop because it's been like that ever since, you know, people are tribal you know yeah and so you know i think the best way to to limit it is actually keep that teach it at home and that's both then that's all races don't don't even oh well white people is more than this or black people are no 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 I, I ain't playing that you know it is that crap is taught at an early age um so if you really want to you know put your money where your mouth is start dealing with it at, at your home front dads and and being a man in your home um and that would and that would help a lot well, and, and just raising your children to love each other, regardless of, of skin color or educational background or, or financial background, whatever, uh, you know, just to be kind to others, mm -hmm. uh, which, I, you know, I think it says something like that in the Bible about, you know, even if you have all the knowledge in the world or all the wealth in the world and you give it all away, but you don't love. Right. It means nothing. Well, it, it, I, I it, feel like that translates. The thing, the thing, of this is such a touchy. T here's two white boys talking about this, and that's what it comes down to, you know. And, and I already know that because yeah. I've, I've dealt with these topics before, and, and a bunch of freaking ignorant people out there. We well, don't know because you're white. You're right. I, you're right, I dude. I don't know because because I'm freaking white. But I'm gonna tell you this: just as you sit there and push this white privilege crap down my throat, I can fire back just as easy. You tell me somewhere else in the United States right now. This isn't this isn't subject revolving around black people. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. People, but seriously, here's the difference between me and everybody else. So before you hate or start getting on or don't like what I got to say, I'm one of the few that has the balls to stand up here and say it. And I'm gonna tell you what else I have the balls to say is number two. Tell me another race in America that they're trying to do away with child support. Now it's not across America, but there are states right now that is coming it down and saying we need. And it, it, I I can read you the article. I have pulled up ending black child support. That, that's that's what it is. I don't, there's no hidden agenda there. 
Now you want to tell me and white, what's that and why are they doing that? Pump the brakes. You want to tell me white privilege? You tell me another white person. I'm not saying because they don't pay child support, they're bailing on it or being a crappy dad, whatever the situation is. Tell me another law that exists in America where a white guy don't have to pay child support. But this is coming down. This is this is this crap that's trying to get passed. So don't sit here and tell me this white privilege crap. I've never seen it. Yeah, I'll I had to work that. for the freaking things I have. Had to bust my butt to get there. You know, I didn't just sit on my butt and hopefully it would just get handed to me. Right. Or think about all the ways that you've so, been wronged in life. And, so don't give me that crap. And yeah. then after this affirmative action, that even more validates some of the things that I have said in other episodes and things in the past. Because to be quite honestly, I didn't realize, because of my ignorance, I'll admit that, I didn't realize those statistics and how outweighed it was to get into those colleges. I'm going to be fair. I went to college, but it wasn't like one of these big colleges. You right. know? Um, so, one. you know, getting into a college in, in northeastern Oklahoma, you, you, you pretty much apply. You're probably going to get it. You know, I mean, yeah. like, yeah. oh, you're white. No, I mean, like, there's not. Right. I mean, be fair. I'm going to be fair to the people here listening. There's not an overwhelming amount of black people where I live. OK, I get that. Yeah. You know. So, uh, you know, let's, let's be fair to be fair. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of shoot myself in the foot on that one. But what I'm saying is, you know, these things are coming down and now they're starting to treat people equal and we don't like it. Well, the thing of it is these things to a degree should happen because here's, here's the other side of it. You look at races in general, there is so many, and, and here's, here's something that the black people want to fight, BLM, go fight this one. Most races, you can get loans for businesses you can get, you know, college money for, you know, and right, there's a bunch right. of other things. I could get an elaborate list if we need to, but those things exist. And again, here's the white privilege. Show me one for being white. Well, there is one it's because not. you just have inherent so, advantages. I'm not sitting here trying to advocate one superior, less superior. Cause I know this again, I know because I've done this long enough people, what they're going to say. And that's fine. They can say all the crap they want to, but I can back it up. These things are facts. The shit spewing out of people's mouths is going to counter this. It's just their crappy opinion because they don't know what they're talking about. Well, and that, you know, because I, I did see uh, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama come out and say uh, that they never would have gotten a chance to go to one of those Ivy League schools uh, if it wasn't for affirmative action. And it, it kind of made me laugh a little bit because I'm like, dude, you were the president of the United States. Don't act like you you didn't have a plan on how to get into college and everything else. And you right. weren't kind of set up for that path. Uh, but next to that, though, the, the real thing, though, that the kind of the question that that came to my mind really was, you know, what, what do they have to say about people who were not accepted into these schools because they weren't diverse enough? Because in my opinion, that is kind of reverse racism mm -hmm. and saying that, hey, because of the color of your skin, you don't qualify to get in here because your test scores aren't high enough and you're also not yeah. a minority like that. That well, seems... I mean, which is what I just said. It doesn't <laughs> sound like, like inequality. It in, in these two schools in particular, it doesn't seem like the white person is privileged now, does it? Well, and that's I mean, what they, it is. It's reverse racism. I mean, it is what it is. It just happens to be white, and there's two people, white people talking about it. So we're automatically racist. I, I get that. You know, say what you want. But this is this is the thing. I mean, it's. I, I know it depends on how this platform goes in what direction idiots take this. But if it just stops at this, I think it's perfectly fine. Now, if this crap starts getting into the workforce and people start, you know, and we start going backwards from what little progress we've made in, in race, yeah, there's an issue to be had there. But that's not the issue at hand. That, that crap hasn't played out yet, you know. Right. And to be fair in America, you know, not that this is not a big topic, but there's a lot of big topics that need, you know, fought right now. You know, the president's election be one of them. Um, he might trip his way into it, I, for all I know. Right. Uh, well, no, it, it just the. I guess the, to me, the overall point of it all is just that there's clearly a, a blatant discrepancy in like in what they're trying to say, I feel like, in the sense of, hey, this is going to make it harder for minorities to be able to succeed in life. Uh, but what they don't ever really address, though, is what about the uh, what's the right word I'm looking for here? But basically legacies. Uh, that's the right word I'm looking for the legacy families that have been like their parents went to Harvard, they went right. to Harvard, the grandkid, you know, this long line of people that have been going to that school forever and then come out and go into these big corporate jobs and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Why aren't we focusing on those guys? 
oh wait, because they donate money mm -hmm. and they have a lot of political influence in the world. So no, they don't get touched at all on this. It's just regular people like you and me that have to take the brunt of the racism. Right. So it's like, if anything, I would just crack down on the, the legacy uh, attendants who, who go to the school. You know, like if you're, if three generations of your family have went to that college, then maybe you have to sit this one out to let the, the black guy, the Hispanic guy get in. You know, right. I, I guarantee you they wouldn't like that. And they would call that racist. Um, I mean, but and it's just kind of like those things. It's like we, there's so many different arguments to be made on it. But I, I, just, I feel like they're focusing on the wrong people. Like, I don't think you and me are the problem. I don't think Asian Americans are the problem. And I don't think Asian Americans that support ending affirmative action in college admission are supporting white supremacy mm -hmm. either. Because I've seen a news article about that. And it's like, what are we doing? What are we trying to say that because Asians are extremely intelligent and they have lighter skin color that now we just have to lump them in with the whites and can't treat them like a minority group? You know, because that, that's kind of what it seems like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you, you look at the some of the stuff that lost. I mean, I read one. The numbers in a new study show that students of color had to work harder to get into Harvard than white ones with hookups, deep pockets, and alumni pedigrees. I mean, that's – so, I mean, yeah, there so you go. I was I mean, just saying. But, you know, to me, maybe I'm naive. People can, you know, just narrow-minded. I don't know, but I look at this same thing I've said in other episodes of this stuff is like – if you look at the breakdown of race, obviously white is predominantly, you know, the bigger race, if, yeah, if you say white. And so between black or, you know, Af you know, any race, it doesn't matter. We'll just say you're outnumbered four to one. It's only natural to look at it like, well, yeah, there's – look at there's 100 people here and 75% is white. Right. Uh, no crap. If you have a college degree, then you should be able to do simple math and realize that – you're outnumbered three to one. That's probably why. It's well, not because it's not necessarily yeah. because of racist. Because there's only a couple of black people or a couple of you know. It doesn't matter what. The, it doesn't matter the race. You well, know. it's the same thing. If I go to Spain and I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone here is you know Spanish <laughs> or whatever, right. or go to Africa and you just expect everyone there to be all equal. You know, there that's an equal amount of, of race uh, everywhere. No, that's not how anything works. You know, because it's geographies regions stuff like right. that and you know ultimately people end well, up grouping together what i want to and i want to reach i want to go back to this real quick you know just so i can clarify what what that thing that i read for the most students of color had to work harder in high school let's we'll stop right there because see here's the, here's the pivotal point here's the part that everybody is missing you got to read these things and you got to read them correctly they they say white that's the that's the thing people look at the black and white oh they were black oh they had to work harder than white people no, that's not what that study showed. It said that it was harder to get in these elite schools than white ones with hookups, deep pockets, or alumni pedigrees. You well, see, yeah. you see, that's a yeah. thing, but they want to lump everybody in. And I'm not trying to defend white and, and not black or vice versa here. But see, that, that's what they're doing they're in, in this article. And I just pulled, you know, this one. This is a pretty reputable source here. You know, well, they, who, they're, who is the source? That's, it's a daily beast. Okay. Um, they are categorizing and, and hammering white people, making it, oh, this is a white thing. It's not a freaking white thing. It, it specifically yeah. says, and you freaking idiots won't read this deep enough. That's the dang problem. Is that stuff real? You bet it is. Wow. I, I mean, I believe it's real, just like you were saying with people of, you know, Barack Obama or whatever. Somebody's, I mean, you got some hookups, you know? Yeah. Well, and I, so that's, that's what this is saying. Yeah. So don't give me that crap. It's like, oh, because you're white, you've got this privilege. No, 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 no. See, that's the problem on the other side of the table, black people, Hispanic people, whatever race you want to say, I'm going to speak for you. Here's the problem. You don't read this crap enough in depth and you don't look at these things deep enough. See, it's not the white people. It's the ones that have the hookups, the deep pockets. You see, that's your freaking problem. <laughs> you want to go after people, not the average Joe. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Good yeah. Pun Dad intended. joke. But that, that's, those, see, that's the thing. Your average white person ain't your dang problem. That's the problem. Yeah, you want you want your freaking problem, black people? I'm going to tell you your problem. Your problem is the people, and, and, and white people too, majority of white people, that's sitting in the freaking offices making these decisions that their pockets are getting fed, playing you all like idiots, like they do every presidential election. Yeah, well, the ones that are sitting there getting money in their pockets off these foreign deals when they're saying, oh, we're going to help the black people out. We're going to help the – let's – tear down this wall or build this wall or do this or do this to this and you vote for them. they're the ones doing it 
And to kind of take it a step further, because you talked about, uh, <laughs> you know, sons and stuff like this. I don't know why, but it did make me think of the, the comment that Joe Biden had made about this is not a quote unquote normal court. And it, yeah. it seemed very ironic for him to say that, <clears throat> especially uh, kind of given the special treatment that his son has allegedly been given by our justice system well, in I'll America. Give you that. It's the only white thing you can do apparently in a library and get away with. Uh, uh, right. White powder, though, I guess. Um, and so <laughs> that, that did kind of get me thinking about like, okay, well, you know, do you think the Supreme Court is too political, you know, and does it need to be changed or, or revised? And if so, do you take that power away from the president to be able to choose who the next? Because that's you know how it how it works. Is the well, president gets to pick who? Like I'm fifty fifty with open. that because I'm fifty fifty with it because you know basically what you're saying is like okay, I become president, I appoint people who's gonna who's gonna do laws the way I want them done, right? And I don't agree with that. Me neither. that didn't happen, of course. Sarcasm. <laughs> no, it definitely does. You know, so, you know, that that's that's one of my issues with it. Um, you know, the other side of it is, is how do you get somebody in there that's fair? Maybe, maybe, just a thought. We could do away with affirmative action and ac- actually look at their accolades. We could look at their, what they've done, what they stand for. So and right. maybe put them in there based off their credibility. And you know, Just a thought. I, I will say this because I know we're talking about college admissions and, and everything else. But in my opinion, the best case for showing you why affirmative action does not work and why you should not give someone a job based on the color of their skin is Kamala Harris. Because I, I don't know of anybody that actually likes her or thinks that she's capable of being the vice president of the United States. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, besides her being black and a female... She somehow got that job. Yeah, and look at what yeah. she's done so far. Nothing besides make herself look incredibly stupid. Well, they both do a good <laughs> job at that. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, that's that's a podcast and ten in itself. Yeah. I mean, I know. Like, yeah, and know, everything like, that's been going on the last three years. Oh no, it's but, a mess, man. And, and yeah. Any, anyways, the to me the overall point though, especially when you're talking about uh, the president making a comment that this isn't a normal court and everything else, and then it's also coming out more and more that. The Department of Justice has interfered heavily with investigating Hunter Biden for his alleged crimes. You know, it's like, how how can you get on any podium and say that? Um, now, I know all politicians, or at least the vast majority of them, are hypocrites. You know, mm-hmm. are say one thing, do another. That's why every mm-hmm. presidential election we always get riled up. Oh, my gosh, they're going to change this or this is finally going to happen. They're going to cancel student debt. They're going to legalize marijuana, right. you know, blah, blah, blah. They're going to cut our taxes. <laughs> yeah, y'all voted yeah. Y'all voted Biden in. You see yeah. how much – it's people. People are so freaking ignorant. Oh, the president said – okay, yeah, the president said he's going to do what with college debt. Has it been done? No, and it keeps yeah. getting shot down. Yeah, exactly. The president yeah. doesn't have the power that everybody thinks he does. No, <clears throat> and, and next to that, you know, I think that people need to remember that it's just words until it happens, mm-hmm. you know, and until we, we see people that actually kind of put one foot in front of the other and let their actions speak louder than the words. I think this is just going to continue to be a cycle we see. Well, over and it over will, again. you know, you start looking at it and because this is a race thing, but you know, the thing of it is you've got, you've got the similar thing, you know, not race wise, but you've got these similar arguments and people's getting sick of it with the LGBTQ side. Um, and that, not intentionally, but we'll dive into those things here in a minute. But these things are what's happening in America is what you see is this stuff is the LGBTQ. And the only reason I'm bringing this into this right now is because people are pushing back on this. I don't know. And, and it's getting, getting pushed back from politics now because actually people are standing up to it. So the politicians are like, Oh, hold on now. Yeah, I got to get on board with my people so I can get reelected. Mm-hmm. Um, Fire up the base. But and the reason why you look at these things and, and very valid places you know the reason these things are happening is simply because and that's why i said earlier in the episode when it came down to the race thing is because y'all have shoved this crap down so many people's throat with the lgbtq stuff people's like i'm sick of it i'm just sick of hearing about it i'm sick of seeing it everywhere i'm sick of it being forced on me my kids my family you know the schools the you know everywhere and so people's like i'm done with this and so they're standing up against it and that's and that's what i was kind of referencing earlier you know 
everybody wants to say or say how good the BLM and all this other stuff. I have an opinion on the BLM. Not not saying black people, BLM specifically. Yeah, the but organization. They did not help. And so you shove this crap down people's throats so much, you know, with all these reparations, you know, all these things, and you're just making it in your face all the time, all the time. What do you think the government wants that? They, they want us divided. And they know if they keep that crap in there, what they will do is they will suppress you. Yeah, yeah. They are While suppressing. They yeah, everything. exactly. What they're doing is they're suppressing black people. They will put this stuff in front of you so much where you're sick of it, just like they're doing with the LGBTQ stuff, and people get sick of it, and they will just, they will just start wiping this stuff away. So there is some valid argument not to go back into the middle of the podcast, but there is some valid arguments how this could relate to the workplace, how this could transition to other places because people will get sick of it. Um, but with the race in mind and with this LGBTQ crap, it's affecting the military. Well, before you, you, you talk about the, the military though, I did want to make one quick comment because I, you know, you were kind of going so fast there, but whenever you're talking about ending black child support mm -hmm. you know where no i'm assuming black male whatever owes child support yeah, so anymore back before we, support, before we go down whatever. so people that question this look it up ending child support for black people in california google it this it's there this so you say oh right, you, right. you don't have to look through the, all these things it's california okay how does that not hurt black women and how's it hurt how's, kids or, or just black families in general? Yeah. So you know, like, that, that doesn't, it doesn't, it, make it, it makes sense. no sense, you know? Yeah. And that's what they say. The people writing this black or white, I don't know who's doing it, but they're all like, yeah, yeah, this is a good idea. We yeah. should like, really? That's not reparation. You don't hold people accountable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And on top of that, let's not hold you accountable. Let's make your kids pay for it too. And then yeah. the single mother that's having to, you know, scrape or the single, you know, well, it said specifically black men. Didn't yeah. say women. So I guess yeah, if you're right a black now. woman, that's actually bad, even worse now that I think about it. Because now that's all specifically towards black men. What if a black woman says, screw you, I don't want to pay you? Oh, yeah, like she's, she's the breadwinner. She, well, she's gonna, well, no, I'm saying what if, what if she's, we'll just say she's a piece of crap mom and she don't have the kids. But right. she's like, I'm not paying you child support. And the guy struggles and he's, you know, trying to bust his butt, getting by, you know, whatever. But the mama should be paying. Well, that law is not going to apply. So the woman could say, I get it. Oh, now we're getting a law based. Man, I go based all day with this. Sex, now we're getting yeah. a law based off race and sex. Yeah. Yeah. Which seems uh, very counterintuitive. So, I mean, you see, man, I, I didn't even yeah. think about that when I first read it. But either way, I just, yeah, just, you saying that the first thing that comes to my mind is like, uh, that doesn't sound like it helps anybody. No, I mean, uh, the kids. Besides the political candidate that oh, wants it to helps say, the freaking. Look at what I'm doing. I'm making reparations. I, I know. Heaven, for, heaven forbid if we, you know, made people get into schools based off their, you know, st you know, good test scores. And, and heaven forbid we actually held a, a father or a mother accountable for for the kids. Yeah, for not taking you know? care of their child. And, you <laughs> yeah. know, I don't know. I guess apparently, you know, in this, this was an overwhelming bunch of black people not paying their child support. So, you know, I don't know the result. I don't know. I'm just going off the numerous, numerous, numerous things. This is, they try to push this. I don't think it's going to go through. There's no way. I'm, it's and California, man. If I was a black person, I would not vote for that. I would not support that. And well, I would say what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish by this is racist. You cannot tell me that ending black child support is reparations and it's a slap in the face to everybody in the community. And I, yeah. I think a vast majority of black people would agree with that statement. Um, man, I can't speak for, I'm not speaking. I'm about what I'm about to say. I'm going to tell you right now. This has nothing to do with any race period because white people do it too. But there's people out there that get pregnant. That's all they do. They just live off the child support. Mm -hmm. They do it on purpose. Yeah. They have baby daddies for a reason. <laughs> no, it is a plan. You know, it is like, a plan of attack. You're yeah, right. They got plan A, plan yeah. B, and they was like, we've got plan C. Well, I'll tell you what's not being planned. Uh, veterans planning on telling their children to join the military. No. And yeah. you know, that's where I was kind of going a minute ago when I said that, you know, I'm taking a different direction, but <laughs> no, I mean, I, that's part of it. There's several things, you know, that's going into that, you know, whenever I would, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, man, you know, like I fought, I fought in, you know, I was in the Marine Corps, you know, uh, in, in combat as well, you know, did my time, but I, man, with the thing, with the climate of things right now, this did not have a lot to really do with race at all. I don't think, um, for my opinion, it, it has to do with all the changes on being pussies. Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want my kid joining the military because what it stood for then it ain't like that now, you know, for just, for instance, remember I was in, I know it's an old policy. Don't ask, don't tell. That was a policy. But the thing of it is it worked, you know, like 
I knew there was people, man, and I'm not trying to crap on the Navy or it doesn't matter what branch. I'm not trying to, but look at this crap. We knew that stuff went on, you know, yeah. but it was like, you don't ask, you don't tell. We, you know, like, I don't care who you're screwing at the end of the day. It, it's just not a topic. Now, did people get beat up or did people get killed? It, it, those things happen. Those things happen in, in the world outside of the military, you know, like, but now you got freaking, and this is, I guess, man, I'm not trying to talk crap on their service, but, you know, you got, Army guys, freaking drag shows, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's I not, mean, come on. Um, it, and this is supposed to be our fighting force of the world. How you, what you're doing is you're making us a freaking laughing stock of the world, big time. Yeah. You know, like you tell me, United States, and this is for the president, anybody, you know, on that state. Any, any I, I could start and start naming all these, you know, seats. But anybody, anybody that has any thing to do with the military tell me one other foreign country that you see on national television that their military is going out freaking doing drag shows that or, is a fight or you know has about it top uh military personnel that identifies transgender yeah it, it's it's a freaking joke and you're making us a joke in front of everybody in the freaking world yeah, you know it, you have to have people in there you know even if it's just a, a look it, you, the military should be intimidating. You're there for one purpose. You know, bottom, bottom line of it is, if there's a conflict, you're there to kill people. Now, I understand that it's not everybody's job, but they're a support of some sorts. You know, that's what, that's what it's for. Right. Well, I mean, and, yeah, ultimately, and protect your own borders. And you want me to look at you as a fighting force, the United States military. They're supposed to be intimidating. We will kill you if we have to, to defend our country. And you're out there wearing a damn dress? <laughs> Yeah. Really? Um, it, it's not. The, and I'm not. Most, and I'm gonna specify. I'm, I'm gonna cut you off on that one because I want to specify. I'm not. I'm not talking about women. You're out there. You dress like a damn clown, wearing your freaking drag crap, and you think that you should be the highlight of the United States of America's military? No, you are a damn joke, and you should never have been there in the first place. You should have kept your crap out of the military. You should have kept your crap out completely out of it. Go do your thing somewhere else. Yeah, if you want to be a performer, yeah, perform you know, elsewhere. We, military yeah. should have no place for that. But see. They've allowed it. They've let it happen. We got to. No, we don't. We got to. And so here we are, <laughs> and people. So people see this because of all this crap. What I said, I said earlier about the race. What I said earlier about the LGBT. They pushed this stuff on us, and people are like, "No, I don't want. To, no, no way would I let my kids do that." And I'd have to say that too because society within itself. Now the problem of it is, you get in the military, and you've everyone know this. You're on a freaking government contract. You will do what you're told. Yep. If you got to get vaccinated, you know, then you got to get yeah, vaccinated. I mean, yeah, you know, or uh, you have no choice. If they're telling you that you need to identify a certain way and use certain pronouns, then you got to yeah. do that. Uh, you're free. That's the problem. You yeah. have you have all these things that men and women fight for, constitutional rights. But mark my words on this, and anybody that's ever been in the military can validate this. Just because you fought and died, and people have died for that, believe me, some of your constitutional rights don't really exist when you're in the military. Yeah, not in the way that you would see. Like I can go and tell an LGBT, I can call them whatever the heck I want, do what I want, do that crap when you're in the military, and you will get freaking trouble for it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even just so what I'm saying is your freedom of speech when you're in the military, you got limited speech. Well, you know, and the reason why I felt like this was a good topic is I remember whenever I was like right around 16, 17, and we kind of had the conversation of like, do you go the military route or do you just go straight into to college and i do remember you telling me like no it's not worth it Devin. don't go into the military yeah you got too big of a brain you're way too smart and good looking and i don't remember that yeah uh, okay i might, I do that. Remember I might that that in <laughs> i think it's a little exaggerated uh slightly but anyways the the point of it being is that you know it's safer but it's also because of the climate even back then in 2016 mm -hmm. that this doesn't look like it's going to be good if you were to join now uh, or in the future. And so I remember you kind of persuading me to not even consider it at all because I had several recruiters and stuff. And, you know, I know they got cush office jobs in the military, pencil pushers, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. them, uh, with a college degree. But it, whenever you told me that, though, it really did kind of seal the deal for myself of like, eh, if my dad is telling me who served four years yeah. uh, in the Marine Corps, then that that yeah. ought to tell me everything I need to know. People will knock me for what I'm about to say, but you're not the first person I've talked out of going to the military. No, I've done it before. Well, yeah, it's I'm because sure. people, because here's the thing. 
I'm not a recruiter. Recruiters are paid. Not you know, they're paid. They're on their salary because they're in the military. But they're going to tell you you're a number to them, and it's their job to get you in. And so they're going to tell you basically whatever you want to hear, give you whatever you want, you know, whatever. I'm not. I'm going to give you the reality of what you're getting ready to walk into. And most people, men that I've, I said, because I mean, I haven't talked to any girls about it, but they ain't ready for it. They're not ready for that commitment because once the thing of it is, once you're in there, you're stuck. You can't just like, oh, I'm done. I'm going home. Yeah, quit. Uh, this is you're on right. contract. Yeah. You know, so you have to fulfill that contract. They'll get it out of you one way or the other. And everybody that I've talked to is like, after I've talked to them, they're just like, no, I can't deal with that. You know, heck, when I went in, like, you know, like even tattoos, I mean, it was almost like a rite of passage. You know, like right. the more tattoos, you know, you had restrictions, you know, like on your face and all this other crap. But like that was a thing. <laughs> crap, man. Now you have to get like all these approvals. You can't have them on this camp because and because of where we. That's the oh, problem. Yeah, what I it is, it's PR crap. Now I can't speak for that. I can speak for the Marine Corps. It's because what it is is PR. They're worried about the way you look. Man, I get that, but. Yeah. You look at the way yeah, you look. Know, you're worried about my freaking tattoos, and you let these people freaking sit here and wear a lipstick and makeup, grow boobs, cut their penis off. What? It, yeah. And I can't get a tattoo. Yeah, or show my tattoo. Now, how or, in the world yeah. am I supposed to go to my 18 year old son's dad? I don't want to go to the military. Oh, go sign yeah. up, boy. Yeah. Oh, it's totally fair, and you're no, gonna love it. Like, <laughs> hell no. At least here, as a civilian. I have freedom of speech. I can say what I want. If you don't like it, go freaking kick rocks. And there, that's not how that works. You yeah. Know, so yeah. no, it's all of it is very strange, and it, it's sad because if I understand, uh, like some of what you were saying, talking about this uh, issue as well, is that are we at like the fewest list of new? Yeah, I think the recruiting uh, numbers are down. I think it's like fifty thousand or something. It is a lot. They're they're ha- they're having they're having trouble meeting their quotas. Now this is not just a now it's because I was a Marine Corps. I know that's more primarily what I've talked about. This is not just a Marine Corps thing. This is across right. You know all the branches. Um, yeah, they're having a hard time getting that. So and here's and here's what here's what ultimately happened. Our genius. I don't even know why they made this article. To be honest with you. But uh, to me, that article is a threat to national security as far as I'm concerned because what you did is just made it publicly known to the whole world that our numbers are decreasing in our military size. Right. Which is my opinion. Um, however, you know, I think that has to do with the stuff that's coming out of what I was talking about earlier was politics because that's where this crap is ultimately coming from and people voting stuff in, doing it doing in, in all various different levels. And so people don't want to go now, go to the military and all this other stuff. You know, besides the pay, the benefits, what you know, whatever they may be, um, those haven't really ever been an issue. So that's not really a thing. So you got to look at the atmosphere surrounding it, and, th- and this is what it comes down to. Um, and I think that that's the biggest playing factor. Now you look at all these articles; they come up with all this other crap, you know, whatever. Because there's other factors too. You know, like you know, like me. You know, when I was in the military, the biggest the biggest regret, and I say that word very loosely because I don't regret anything. I well, there's things I did regret doing, but. It's just a psychological aspect of it. And, you know, I don't, you know, but the biggest, let me say this, the biggest problem I had and the reason I am the way I am with politics and not some government conspiracy is because it was the government. And I will say this and I'll say it to anybody that wants to question me. It was the government that killed our guys while we were in Iraq. It's because you have a bunch of people sitting in the Pentagon White House changing our rules of engagement. I mean, literally, we're sitting in we and, and anybody that was over there, they can testify to the things I'm saying. It's not just like I'm making this crap up on the fly. You know, hundreds, thousands, thousands of, of guys can vouch for what I'm saying. We're two, three weeks. This I could be a little off on. You know, it's been been a few years, almost twenty. <laughs> but you know, they change our rules of engagement in combat, where we have to be shot at to return fire. You know what happens? People start getting killed and shot. Like no crap. Yeah, These wild. are people sitting here calling the shots back here in the United States and you had a freaking clue what's going on over there. And if you go back several episodes, I've talked about this before. Anybody that's sitting there calling the shots of anybody that's sitting in a combat zone, if you've never been to combat zone yourself, you shouldn't even be freaking sitting in in those meetings as far as I'm concerned. You should have no discussion with it at all. You have no business because you don't know what it's like and you've never walked those shoes. Now, then all of a sudden... And I'm summarizing what those rules of engagements were, but then they re- basically came back and revised them. And basically, they look at you funny, kill them. Now, that's not what it said, but that's <laughs> kind of basically how loose they were. Right. And you know what happened? People stopped dying. Exactly. Well, Our guys. I, yeah, being able to shoot first does yeah. have a, and a big advantage. The thing of it is, we didn't, 
at least the union side, we didn't take matters on his to start just killing everybody and going crazy and losing our minds. And, you know, no, but we actually, we're not evil, you know, completed the mission and task that we were supposed to do. So based off what I was told, that's what I'm saying. It was our government that killed these guys as far as I'm concerned. No, a hundred percent. And you know, you saying that honestly, is that why we're facing the situation we are now with the, the fewest number of, of, of applicants and, uh, new recruits coming in is because there's been this trend for the last 20 plus years mm-hmm. where little bit by little bit it's becoming more and more political and it's less about actually protecting uh, first and foremost our troops yeah. uh, but then whatever mission that they're engaged in and so yeah, it's they like, don't care about you they yeah, don't care about the, too much freaking politics I've yeah. said this before even when I was in Iraq the only one that follows the Geneva Convention is the United States and I, I, just, I can't help but feel like that's has to play a major role in a lot of people's decisions and not joining is knowing that once I get in there and I'm basically the government's slave to do whatever they tell me to do, mm-hmm. are they going to send me to my death because they're worried about well, optics? That's the thing, you know, you know or, or a bad news report that comes out. Yeah. Well, maybe don't let the cameras go over there. But the problem with that is that in reality, if you don't take cameras or have reporters on the ground, then horrible things can take place. Right. without ever being brought to light. Right. So there's a, a delicate balance there. But overall, no, you can't tell your troops to go into another person's country and say, well, wait until you get shot but to be you fair, know, before, that's, you, before you start killing them. Maybe be fair, um, that's another reason too, and I kind of flip that, reverse, is that's another reason I would encourage people probably not to join because I think there's a day coming real quick where some stupid president's going to try martial law in the United States. Yeah. Yeah, and then that veteran or that veteran, but that military personnel is going to have to decide at that point whether to follow what orders, a, an order yeah. or the contract that they signed by law, at least it was, they can't fight American people. They can't turn against American people. Um, so they would have a hard, hard time with that. Um, I would never want my kid to be in that position. And unfortunately, I think it's, I think some dummy's going to try it. No, hundred percent. And then, and then you're not fighting in a foreign country. Then you're going to have, I think, a lot of foreign um, people involved because the the government, our military, is not big enough to fight an internal fight in the United States. I don't personally think so. No way. There's Um, no veterans. And the way that they're trained now, man, I dare even say these things. You know, the people who are trained like me, twenty years ago, um, fifteen years ago, thirty years ago. I would say the least, it ain't the same training that it is now. Right. I'm not going to say, oh, we're so much better. Um, It's not the same. Well, maybe saying not so much better, but I I think you could make an argument in saying that they had better tactics then. Like I, I think too many people nowadays try to rely on data and statistics and, oh, statistics show if we give our troops eight hours of sleep every night and we uh, feed them three hot meals a day and make sure that they have uh, plenty of beer to drink or, you know, I mean, basically start putting all these amenities or whatever else in place because studies show, you know, and that's how you start to kind of lose a little bit sight of what it's really about, which ultimately you have to be prepared for anything, including suffering. And uh, I don't think enough people in the military do that those kinds of things anymore whenever it comes to actually training them. When you're dealing with stuff, when you're working with the government, CIA and Marine Corps, stuff like, I'm going to tell a lot of things there. Um, <laughs> you, you don't, you're not, yeah. you're not held to the same freaking standard. You know, they have these little things like, here's like your code of conduct, I guess per se, or the way that we're supposed to do things. But I'm telling you, when you're sitting in those freaking, you know, you're sitting in combat, and they're like, oh, you get to get eight hours of sleep. Yeah, no. Nah. No? Nah. I mean, I, I don't even know. I'd have to look on some of the, notes that I may or may not have kept when I was over there. Um, it was, I mean, it was like probably 30, 40 days before I even had water over me to shower. I mean, it was, it was a while. I don't know if it's that long. It's quite a while. Um, you know, and and what I do you mean, do? we were, you know, you talk about black people. I, I mean, I was black, man. I lived in a charcoal <laughs> suit. Literally, I was in a black charcoal face. suit, chemical suit for, for in hundred degrees, some weather for, Days and weeks, you know, I mean, that stuff, is, you know, you couldn't tell, you so couldn't is tell that, the difference between anybody out there. Is that acceptable blackface, you know, if you are in a... I guess they could probably try, and today they'd probably suit, try it, you, you know, know, like... Take a picture of you right but, after you got... Well, that's why I'm off. so passionate and, and against some of all this crap people saying white privilege, black privilege, you know, all this other stuff, and I've even said it too, man, you know, like, 
I don't know. I'm just a stupid white boy. Didn't know no different. I wasn't raised that way. I didn't yeah. see color like that. Uh, yeah. And, you know, when I went to the military, I didn't see it, man. Like, they shot at me. My job's to shoot back. My job was to protect me, myself, you know, other people. And, and, you know, yeah, coming from a white guy, there's black guys that would have died for me. There's guys that were, hell, that, for that matter, even take it, take it a step further because, you know, so ignorant. There is people that fight in the military in case you know this, you can get your citizenship. By yeah. There was people that ain't even U.S. citizens fighting right next to me that would have, take, would have given their life for mine. And they ain't even freaking a U.S. citizen. I'm telling you, man, I didn't see color. Yeah, well, and and, and, I, and I get so sick of this crap coming from all this other stuff. And I, and there's several thousands, millions of veterans that say the same. I don't see color like that. Those people would have died, and that's a and that's a camaraderie. See, the thing of it is, we had something like that in the United States. Maybe hard. I'm not going to say it's not hard, or it would be easy, but it would be very hard. But if we start looking at things that way, you know, for the value in people, and what maybe what they bring to the table, and quit this crap. This some stuff, of this stuff wouldn't exist, but you know, again, I say some of that. Say these things, yeah. I mean, I I couldn't I couldn't encourage my family, anybody in my family or friends to go to the military, man. Not for what they stand for now, from what I see, they they've lost pretty much most respect. You know, yeah, yeah. And from is, what I can see, is it planned? I don't know, uh, but it, it's sad, oh. and it, it's a sad state of affairs. Uh, you know, I, I do. I, I just want to make sure and say this because i don't know if i really pointed it out earlier but i am happy that the supreme court decided to end affirmative action for college admissions i think it's a really good case study to look at now to see how uh race plays into college admissions if at all because i mean technically it shouldn't but uh, i am interested to see kind of what the the next thing becomes the next crusade but, you know, and, and we'll definitely talk about it whenever it does come up. <laughs> um, yeah. But either way, though, guys, you know, I can't tell you enough how much I, I appreciate you all listening. Uh, I feel like every week, you know, we keep getting bigger. We keep growing more and more. And, you know, it's all because of you. So thank you so much for, for giving us a little bit of your time. And if you ever have any content ideas or a topic that you see that you want to hear us talk about, uh, my DMs are open. So just hit me up. I'd love to hear from you. But other than that, I hope you have a great night.